Hey guys, we're back. Just a couple days left here in the month before the end of the season and trying to make a big push for top 250. Um, so first first of all, if you're uh, new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for supporting me. And you guys are the backbone. I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, no real changes here to the deck since the last video. It's just honestly working really well. Um, I think the whole plan here is basically kind of using Invasion of Tarkir to really dominate the creature decks. And then when we're up against more controlling decks, just understanding that Invasion of Tarkir is literally just a shock uh, and never trying to flip it because that's kind of where you can get into trouble, especially against like blue-white control, um, other decks that have you know, just a high amount of removal, you know, spending all that time trying to flip your invasion can really just lose you the game. So just just knowing when and when not to try to flip this card, I think is a, a lot of the nuance of this deck. Um, okay, let's just go ahead and hop into some games. I had a chance to do a couple games here on my tablet over the last day or so. Uh, right now, I think we're in like around 775 Mythic, so... Gotta make a decent push, but I think it's within reach. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you wanna leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you wanna show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. Hope everybody's been having a, uh, yeah, good month so far. Um, I'm just really enjoying Mono Red. It's just so straightforward. I love it. And just, I think, you know, this deck has had a really good track record against Boros Convoke, which has been kind of surprising to me since And the Festivities is a great card, but I think it's actually come down to a lot more of Invasion of Tarkir just dominating that matchup. Obviously, like, they're still going to get their nut draws a couple times, but for the most part, it's going pretty well. I'm curious to hear from you guys, you know, what kind of decks you've been playing. You know, have you been doing more like mono-white aggro, um, other types of decks? Um... Those are all great decks too. I just, I've really been enjoying the burn side of uh, Mono Red. And I feel like with the end of festivities, um, around three copies kind of feels right. Just sort of enough to keep Boros in check, but not just kind of like going overboard. Okay, I don't know what that was. Also really excited that uh, next month is going to be standard for the qualifier weekend. So if anybody can make top 250, this is, I mean, this is the month to do it. Okay, opening hand looks great. We've got two mana, stuff to do. Um, no turn one play outside of play with fire, but that's fine. All right, Golgari. So here I think we're just going to wait for Invasion of Tarkir to give ourselves a decent target. And we're going to not show our opponent that we do have a Shivan Devastator here. No reason to give extra information. Golgari is a deck where they, they do have certainly some removal, so I don't know if this is the best deck to be using to, or trying to flip Invasion, but I feel like it can also steal some games, so I'm kind of um, a little mixed on it. 
So here I think we just want to set up end of turn uh, invasion flip. Now the problem with this, a consideration is if they have like go for the throat, this is super awkward. So I think a lot of this is going to come down to if they leave up mana or not. Other possibilities we could do here, we could just go like Devastator for two. That at least keeps some more cards in our hand. So I kind of like that. But if I can go like end of turn flip without any open mana on their, on their side into Devastator, like it's such a beating. So I think there's enough of a benefit here to try to just go for it. So I'm just gonna leave up mana. Now, admittedly, this does give them a 4-4, four four, so another consideration. And this could just be like a really bad play, but I think there's like a high enough upside. And we certainly don't want to trade with their 4-4. Four four. Okay, now this is great. So now we can go um, either Devastator for three, we can go Codebreaker plus Devastator. I kind of like Code, Codebreaker plus Devastator. Um, it puts more stuff onto the board and we still get like the trigger from Defiant Thunder Maw. So we can like take out their Frillback, plus it also shrinks their Glutton. So is that worth it? The other side of it though is that like, I guess we're at 15, we can take another hit here. Maybe it's better just to get the, the big Devastator because we are basically giving away two points of damage from this. Yeah, this is close. I think maybe it's, I'm gonna go with a 3-3 here. Although I could kind of see either way. And here I think we just start controlling the board, take out their frill back. So most likely they just have to go for the throat for the Thunder Maw here. So we could do Codebreaker um, as a disguise creature here. I don't really want to pay the ward cost on this, so I think we're just racing. So otherwise, I guess we could go like, hmm. And I think we, we are able to race here well enough. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do face down code breaker and then try to get everything into the yard so I can do a flip up next turn. Ah, auto tapper. <sighs> yeah, should have uh, not auto tapped so I could play both of these spells, but I guess we're holding back in the festivities here. Here I think we just uh, get Mishra's going and sack that because we don't want to lose our code breaker.
Now we can end the festivities, get rid of Liliana. This is actually really nice. And then we can also pay the ward cost to get rid of the trespasser. Um, and that feels pretty good. So if we pay the ward cost, then we can flip up. Yeah, I think I want to do it that way. We've got enough stuff going on in the yard. All right, so let's push. I guess they could Restless Cottage us next turn, but we'll still be at enough. Now let's go ahead and flip up. Just in case we have like a um, Monstrous Rage or something we can use. Yeah, there's the Monstrous Rage and that feels pretty good right now, especially with them only having a, a green up. And we'll um, put it on our Code Breaker just to kind of diversify our threats a little bit. So they could have Gix's Command here, but even if they have Command, like we still can kill them with Devastator. So I think we just go Swift Spear here. Or I guess they could have like, uh, yeah, there's the command. It's not gonna be good enough. Opening hand looks great. So unfortunately they had the felt on, so we can't really make use of invasion here. But I think that's okay. So I think... Actually, we can still get rid of it because we've got a Devastator in hand. And I think early enough, this is actually okay. We don't want to keep taking hits from the felt on. So now that we've got a Devastator can get rid of their fell down. It does give them some card draw here, but slowing down the pressure feels pretty good. Oh, and they've got another Kumano. Okay, that's actually kind of good to get that out of their hand. We are at seven, but now we can go Code Breaker plus Rage to go ahead and flip our invasion. And that's gotta be the play.
So he is maybe double in the festivities here. Oh, lightning strike. Yeah, that'll do it. So I think that was, yeah, I mean, if he didn't have the lightning strike, plus the, we, we might have been able to stabilize there. So, yeah, it happens. Okay, up against Toxic. Um, do I want to have access to two Play With Fires? I don't think it matters that much, and we need to push some extra damage, so I think that just going for Foundry here is probably fine. Since we're attacking, let's get the damage in now. Just get rid of his Skrelv. This could also be, actually this looks like it might just be Esper mid-range. Yeah, or I guess Jeskai mid-range maybe? I think we do have to respect this for sure. Um, we can push just to see if he decides to block and then we, I guess we can like throw these both at face. It's not a, a huge difference. I guess, yeah, we're doing four, he's gaining two. So it's actually just better if we just get rid of him here. But yeah, I think we have to respect the lifelink, especially because next turn if he plays Rafine, like we just never want that combo happening. And they've always got the Rafine. <laughs> Okay, nice draw. So here's the question. We could just push with Swift Spear if he blocks, run the Monstrous Rage, and then hold back the Foundry so if he tries to get like a free attack in, we can get rid of it that way. But then again, like he, as it, he is at 13, we're trying to push damage. I feel like we gotta attack with both here because like we're never winning just by like trying to like outlast him. Yeah, now I think we just do the rage just to push damage since he's tapped out. And now we can like try to hope to like burn him out. <laughs> okay, so much for that, good lord. Whew. Yeah, ignition's pretty rough. Not gonna lie. need to have some exceedingly good draws here to race but it's theoretically possible lockdown is brutal yeah I don't think we can win this because if he just goes for this next turn it's over but I guess we play to our outs
yeah, I think this is pretty much over, but I guess we'll just play it out. Yeah, the lockdown was pretty nasty. I don't think with this point we have any possible outs, but I guess we'll just uh, see the top card. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Yeah, the lifelink there, super nasty. One possible thought I've been thinking about is um, running the uh, the three mana four three that prevents life gain, and it's it's a bit of um, that might be kind of an extreme response, but I definitely do see a ton of life life gain in a lot of the other decks, and like we can throw out so much damage that it feels like that's the one way we lose if they just have like an obscene amount of life gain. I don't know, it's a possibility. It's something to think about. Really nice uh, invasion here. Okay, so now they just got reinforcements. So with that in mind, um, yeah, we'll have Devastator for next turn. We could just Lightning Strike this, but yeah, let's push into it and see if they walk into it. This way we can just uh, play with fire on their turn to flip this. No reason to do it now. Um, like we'll get an extra point here, but then this will be at one. So I think we just let this happen. Pretend like we haven't got it. And maybe we can eat one of their creatures next turn. Could be going for Knight Errant here. Okay, this attack is strange. Like, why does it attack with one creature? <sighs> they might have, like, Lightning Helix or potentially, like, another Eganjo. This is a little too suspicious. I feel like we just flip this end of turn instead of eating, attempting to eat their reinforcements. So I feel like if we just like, if we just take this, then like, okay, so they just had Evangelist, that's fine. Now we could Lightning Strike Evangelist, but I think we hold on to this in case we need it against something else. I don't feel like we need it right now. Do we want a Devastator for three or for two? I kind of like Devastating. 
for two because we can like later use Sokens in to get Godric into the air. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but I feel like it's a possibility. Hmm. It's a couple turns out to be doing that. And I guess like the extra damage really does matter. Still, I think there's a possibility we can use this effectively. So I think I'm just gonna Devastator here for two. And then I think we just hold back with Swift Spear since we can block effectively some of their creatures at the moment. Take out Evangelist and one of the bats. Yeah, this is pretty scary actually now with the uh, Beard and Bunicorn. Yeah, they've got the Imidane's Recruiter plus four mana. Okay. So if they have a guy plus Recruiter next turn, that's... We need to have one blocker for Bunicorn for sure. And then we're taking three, five, eight, 13. We can, I guess 15, 17, 19, then we kill two creatures. I think we're still fine here. All right, so we play Godric this turn, set up. And actually, I suppose we just can attack with these three. If we kill Knight Errant, we have this for Bunicorn. That's three, five, or three, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen if they draw another creature. So I think this is still safe. And then next turn we've got Lightning Strike or Sokinson to get Godric into the air. And that should be game.
Um, yeah, opening hand looks great. Got Codebreaker or Invasion on two. Do they have the Devastator? Oh, wow. This is a very serious dragon deck. They have Tyrant of Care Ridges, Dragon Engine, and Atsushi. Wow. Okay. Got our work cut out for us here. So, if we go Invasion this turn, next turn they play Dragon Engine. Um, kind of want to do Invasion next turn. We do Codebreaker this turn, then they just play Dragon Engine and we just get it. That feels pretty good. Then we go like rage flip it. That feels pretty good. Okay. Yeah, so now next turn they play at Sushi. Um, and we'll have Lightning Strike plus our Dragon. Yeah, that feels pretty good. even go like end the festivities plus lightning strike to kill it but i kind of like getting kumano going so we can use like the thunder maw on the atsushi to finish it off although if we do it this way we'll have the trigger in case they like want to make i don't know like a block or something at instant speed Treasure tokens. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. I think I'm okay with Kumano faces Kakazan here. So they can, I guess, get their own invasion going here if they use uh, Dragon Engine. Oh, I forgot about yeah, the, the Tyrant. Yeah, Tyrant is pretty good. Um, don't have enough to finish off their tyrant, but we can try to kill them. Can at least force blocks here. And me a little bit of trample damage, which is nice. Okay, so next turn, if they play this, we can kill it in response with Lightning Strike. But if we strike now, this goes to six, and they go down to one. That still feels pretty good.
Oh, and that actually makes us a 6-5. Oh, that's nice. Oh, but they can pump. Yeah. Oh, well. Still feels pretty good. So like next turn we've got Kumano plus Mishra. So even if they go ahead and use their Dragon Engine to flip this thing. Capricious Hellraiser. And that'll do it. Nice. Okay, yeah, so I definitely, uh, I like where the deck's at. Um, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are currently 75% win rate, 47 wins and 16 losses. So just to kind of recap here, it looks like 83% win rate on the play, 68% on the draw. Uh, mono red is still a very good matchup, 14 and four, so 78% against mono red. 80% against Boros Convoke. 100% here against Mono White, 7 and 0. That feels pretty good. Um, slightly better than average, 60% here against Blue White Control. 75% against Demir. 100% against Mono Black. And then, yeah, Rakdos is still not a great matchup here. Currently 1 and 2, 33%. Um, Golgari, 3 and 0. And looks like Esper, kind of a rough matchup here. 50-50 uh, against Sultai, sort of like the reanimator combo thing. 100% here against Gruul, uh, Pump, and then 0-1 here against Selesnya and 4-color, which I assume might be like Domain or something like that. So, but yeah, overall, really happy. Um, yeah, one point of consideration, again, I would just mention... If you're running into like a ton of um, life gain, potentially could look at that. Uh, I think it's like, a, oh God, is it a dinosaur? It's like the four, three uh, players can't gain life for three mana. I don't know if it's if it's like worth like bringing in a slot because like the deck is pretty tight as is, but it is a consideration and it certainly would help in some matchups. So, all right, we'll see you guys next time. You guys are awesome.